Today, most of the lecture is not from the book. It's uh, from a handout that I put on Blackboard. It's called the Roskam Airfoil and Wing Parameters Handout. So you can find that in Blackboard. So we're gonna go through that. It talks about airfoils and how to predict the lift of a wing and then some wing planform parameters. But first, I want to wrap up defining angle of attack and angle of a side slip. So draw a picture, a top view of an airplane. like that. The x-axis is at the front, y-axis like that, and the velocity vector of the airplane draw, not necessarily straightforward, but at an angle like that. And it has components U, V, and W. In the X, Y, and Z directions. And so we see the side velocity component here, and we call this angle beta. And then the other components we are on top of each other right here. <clears throat> and we'll call that VXZ. So that's the U and the W. And we're gonna draw another picture <clears throat> looking at it from the side here in a minute.
<laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. I don't know why that shut off. Let me know if that goes off because the people on Zoom can't hear me either. All right, I love running my own TV production company while trying to teach. I'm sure you guys enjoy watching it on TV as well, right? All right, so we've defined the angle of attack and the angle of the side slip, and this is how we do it. Dr. Speck? Um, if the person that is talking is uh, like watching Zoom, he can't hear Any us. questions about this? You've probably seen this before. In the I think that was free right? time. So I'm going to leave that up there even though it's backwards. And if you see um, a chat that I need to know about, say something. Again, I see people saying they can't read the board. If you're trying to watch this on your phone, it's not going to work. Uh, pull up the video. I'll put the video recording online. You can see it. So now we need to talk about airfoils. Can you guys read that? Because I can read it on my monitor. You guys can see it up there, right? I know it's flipped. Okay. So an airfoil is a wing section. wing section at an angle of attack produces a net pressure distribution. So there's pressures so it's a distributed load all over the airfoil and so we end up with from statics we end up with a just with a net resultant aerodynamic force. And a moment that we could take about some point. So this is the lift distribution. You get lift from the wing, from the airfoil, and you get a moment. Now let's say we tilt it down until we get no net lift. So you could tilt it down so you're at an angle of attack that you get no net aerodynamic force, no net lift, no aerodynamic force. That's what's called the basic lift distribution. Basic because there's no net lift, but we can still have, still have a pure couple. There can still be a pure moment. So if you look at that picture of the airfoil, there's no net lift, but there can still be some kind of moment. 
So far, so good. So what's the difference between that and this? Here we're producing lift, here we aren't. Well, it turns out that as you start to tilt this airfoil back up and it starts producing lift, all of the additional lift acts at one point. So the net resultant of the pressure distribution that starts to become positive all acts at one point and that's called an aerodynamic center. And so we can write this total force distribution as the basic lift plus the additional lift acting at the aerodynamic center. And that's in fact why we define that point, the aerodynamic center, is that's where the additional lift acts as you start to tilt it up. And it always, for most airfoils, it acts at a single point as you increase it. And then we still have the pure couple. And that's constant as the angle of attack increases if we take the moment about that aerodynamic center. So we take take moments about the AC because the additional lift acts at that point. There's no moment arm of the additional lift. And all you have is this pure couple from the zero lift distribution. So what that means is that we can write a really nice math model of the lift of an airfoil. Where we draw a picture like this. Here's the aerodynamic center. There's where the, and we divide it up into lift and drag. And then we write a pure couple, the moment about that aerodynamic center. And the moment is constant with angle of attack. And then the lift, we can write as a line the equation of a line. just like you've seen before. So CL is a curve that's a straight line until it stalls. And this is the angle of attack when the lift is zero. And this is the intercept And so all that is, is you take the slope of the line multiply it times alpha, and you add in CL at alpha equals zero. The other way you can write the equation of the line, like this. So 
So those are just two different ways. You either write it in slope x-intercept form or slope y-intercept form. And the key is that the moment then just stays constant with angle of attack. When we use the aerodynamic center as the point at which we calculate our forces. All right, so that's for an airfoil. How about for a wing? So if we build a wing out of airfoil shapes, we have to somehow figure out where does the net lift act on the wing and what is the net lift? Because the fact that a wing has wing tips and you get wing flow, airflow around the wing tips, you get a change. And in 324, you had a formula that allowed you to calculate that based on the span efficiency factor E and the aspect ratio, right? Well, in this class, there's a, a bigger formula that allows you to do that. And that's included in the handout. That's been posted to Blackboard. So here's what the handout looks like. We're going to cover this plan form parameter section up to this point. You guys can see that okay, right here. We're going to cover that, cover that in a minute, but if you go down through the handout, we're going to do this in a minute. I think we'll have time. Scroll down, page through this document, and you get to here, and this is a formula and a graph that shows you how to calculate C capital L, so that's the lift of the wing, versus alpha. So you can get the finite wing lift curve slope. So this, remember, little kit, lowercase l is the, the airfoil or infinite wing lift curve slope. And then this formula allows us to calculate the finite wing lift curve slope. So I'm going to switch back to the board here. Well, that must be the secret to fixing the screen mirroring is to share your screen and then go back, huh? Okay, so this big formula has a bunch of stuff in it that you have to calculate. So again, we're doing a finite wing. So now we still have a line. So the picture for the lift curve still looks the same, it's just that the slope changes, remember that? Because of the, the wingtip effects, once you start producing lift, you get some loss of lift the more you increase the angle of attack, and so you get a lower slope. So finite wing CL alpha is always going to be less than infinite wing lift curve slope. But the intercept tends to be pretty much the same unless we start twisting the wing. But this is what we use that big formula and I'll refer to that as the big formula. Yeah, I need to call media resources and say, via Zoom, this is not legible and they're in charge of this camera. I don't know what's going on. Because we're seeing it fine here. The camera's working fine. What's going on when it's going through Zoom? Yeah, now the recording turned out to be bad because when I recorded in the cloud, it did it at low res. So I switched the recording to high def so I'm going to see how that turns out. I'm working through this. Last semester, I used my own webcam, and it seemed to work OK. So I don't know what the problem is with this camera. Uh, 
What was it? The what cam? In this menu? I didn't see any change, did you? How about on Zoom? Are you guys, does this look better with this setting? No difference. Yeah, I didn't think. Got it. So I'm going to look at the video recording and see if we're better. And I'm going to call Media Resources and ask them why it looks fine here, but it doesn't look fine in Zoom. Oh, they didn't see anything when I switched to the other camera? How are we doing on time? Um, yeah, so subscripts, this is alpha, and this is L equals zero. And this is alpha, and that's alpha. All right, so the things that go into that big formula, I'd really like to use the board and the camera. If we don't get that to work, I'm gonna go back to writing on my tablet. The problem with that is that you can only see so much and then you scroll up and it's gone. Whereas here, I think it's easier to keep up with taking notes. But the Zoom people can't see it, it's a waste of time. So I'll figure it out. So I'm gonna write that big formula on the board and I'm gonna try to write it really big so everybody can see it. I think the issue on Zoom, at least with the low res, is that you could see this, it was just fuzzy, right? And that doesn't make any sense, because if the camera is high def, what's going on? So maybe they don't have something set up right in this room. Okay, so this formula looks like this. This is a capital K there. This is AR squared, beta squared over lowercase k. So I'll make it a really weird k there so it looks smaller than the big one up there. That's gamma c over two, which we need to define. This is actually the sweep angle of the half chord line of the wing. So we need to write that up here. So you have to calculate AR, that's the aspect ratio. In the formula in the book, in the handout, it's just A, big capital A. I like to write it like that because it's obvious beta I'm gonna define here in a minute. Yeah. Uh, uh, the has oh crap, no, sorry. The handout's right and I am wrong. Explain what, what? Yeah, I'm gonna write it here. So the gamma, we're gonna define all this stuff. 
gamma C over two is the half chord sweep angle. And I'm gonna show you how to calculate that next time if we don't get it to it today. Little k is the airfoil lift curve slope divided by two pi. And all this is in the handout. And then beta takes a Mach number into effect. So it's square root of one minus Mach squared. And then this big K is in the handout. There's formulas for that. And it, there's two different formulas. One is for an aspect ratio less than four and one's for an aspect ratio greater than four. So you have to calculate the aspect ratio, which remember is B squared over S, where S is the wing area, and B is the wing span. Oh, and this has to be in radians here, obviously. Because two pi is in radians. So if you have an airfoil and you build a wing out of it, you need to calculate the lift curve slope of the airfoil. And in fact, that's problem number one in your homework assignment is to take the airfoil data that I give you and calculate that lift curve slope. Um, and then um, the other part of the assignment is for a wing that's picture is shown in the assignment, you're to calculate this. So you have to calculate this from the airfoil. And then you have to know some of the other stuff. You need to know, well, what's the wing look like? What's its sweep angle? So you throw that in, you calculate its aspect ratio. So we need to talk about the geometry of the wing next because the geometry determines some of these other parameters. But when you build the wing, then you can get the lift curve slope of the wing from this formula. And notice it's better, it's more inclusive than the one in 324 because it includes the Mach number effects and it has a little better model of how the aspect ratio affects the lift. So next I'm gonna draw what's called a straight taper wing. And this, the, this has a really nice diagram in this handout. So I'm gonna be drawing this. So if you want to make sure you pull this up at home, pull up the handout and look at this again. But I'm gonna draw this big and I want everybody to write this down on your paper because as you draw it, as I draw it, then it gets in your brain in a better way, right? All right, so what I'm gonna draw is a specific geometry called a straight taper wing. And most of the wings that airplanes are built out of will look like this or something like this. In fact, the first wings that the Wright brothers use were just rectangular wings because they're easy to deal with. You can always, if you decide, decide to build your own airplane, you could always make a wing that looks like this.
All right, well, here's your center line of your airplane. But this is going to be a nightmare to figure out, well, what is the area of that thing? Wingspan, you can measure tip to tip. Notice it's not even symmetrical, so you're going to have some weird rolling moments and everything else. But you could do this. Here's your airfoil section here. Here's your airfoil section here. Maybe use different airfoils in different places. But that's going to be a lot of work, not just to calculate, but to build, right? Imagine trying to build the structure to support the airfoils in this and getting the airfoils in the right place and attaching it all together. So a straight taper wing is a much simpler wing than that thing. So what you need to do first is draw an axis. And this axis is particular or peculiar to the Roscom handout. And notice that it's different than what we do as the body fixed axis on the airplane. In that, X is out the nose, Y is out the right wing. Here, X is actually going backwards. And it's only for these wing calculations for this formula. That's it. So, Axis are particular to the just this Roskin handout for this. Okay, so you got your axis drawn, X like that, Y like that. Now we're going to draw a straight taper wing. Uh, take this axis over this way. So draw the leading edge of the wing angled down like this. And copy the same thing over here because we're going to make our wing symmetrical like that. This is the leading edge sweep angle. So call it gamma LE. So that's the angle that the leading edge sweeps back. Same thing on that side, but we're just not going to add it in. And as we draw these on here, we're going to write their definitions over here. Okay, step one. Step two is to draw the trailing edge of the airplane or the wing and draw this at a shallower angle like this. And so this angle here, we're going to label as gamma TE for trailing edge. So that's the trailing edge sweep angle. And so then the wing looks like that, where I just filled in the tip. So gamma TE is the trailing edge sweep angle. And then this is called the root chord. So this is C subscript R. That's the distance of the chord of the wing at the root. And this is called C subscript T. It's the tip chord.
And then the distance from the tip to tip is called the wingspan B. So half of that is B over two, and that's B is the wingspan. And this is much simpler than that wiggly wing that I showed you because the leading edge is straight, the trailing edge is straight, and so it's a straight taper. The wings uses a straight leading edge and trailing edge to taper back. All right, where are we? Oh, and then we'll define what's called the taper ratio. Lambda is C T over CR. And all of this stuff that we're doing is just defining the geometry of the wing so that we can calculate the wing area S, the aspect ratio that we need for that big formula, and the, all of the other stuff that we need. Let's see what's next. Okay, so obviously the cord of the wing varies as a function of Y. So the cord, here's an airfoil here. At the tip, the, the cord is smaller. At the root, the cord is larger. So somewhere in between, we have some cord that's some value in between the tip and the root cord. And then we'd like to know, well, what is the average cord C bar? And it's gonna depend upon, it's gonna be somewhere between the root and tip cord values, and it's gonna be area weighted I'll show you that in a bit. So this is the average cord. And that's what we use in all of our formulas. When you use C bar in your lift or your pitching moment formula, that is that value. So we have to be able to calculate that. So B is the wingspan, C is the cord at position Y. And then C bar is the area weighted average cord. It's called the mean geometric cord, or more commonly the mean aerodynamic cord. So I got about five minutes left. So that's all of the parameters that define the geometry. Now we know the angle of the leading edge, the angle of the trailing edge, the size of the wing, both the span and the cord. And so we can calculate the area of that. So the area is easy, let's do that. I'm gonna leave this up here so that you can get it copied down. S is the wing area. And the way we would calculate the wing area is we add up all of the strips of small areas. So this is DS, it's a small area, and we're gonna add it all up. And DS is equal to calc easy to calculate, it's gonna be C of Y times DY. So the width of the strip is DY, the length of the strip is C, that varies as a function of Y. And so we simply add up all those little strips. And the way we do that mathematically 
is with the integration. <clears throat> so that's exactly what we do. Because the wing is symmetrical, we can chop the integration in half and only do half of it and then double it. So that was easy. All we need to know is a formula for C as a function of distance. And that's just gonna be a linear equation because it's gonna go from CR to CT linearly. And so we can write a formula for that. It's going to be CR minus CR minus CT times Y over B over 2. So for the Zoomers, this is C subscript R, C subscript R, C subscript T, B over 2. And does this work? When y is zero, we plug in y equals zero, we get CR. Check, right? How about when y is b over two? Cancels out, we get CR minus CR cancels out, minus minus CT. So because it's a linear equation, and our lines are straight, we can use this formula. So we could calculate the area of that thing as long as we know the root chord and the tip chord, plug that in here or here, and we can calculate the area of it. And in fact, that's what you're doing on homework problem number four or five, is you're plugging that formula into that formula and calculating the integration. It's easy. We want to calculate the mean aerodynamic chord. It's going to be the average chord. We're going to area weight it because this region of the wing here has a larger chord, so it's going to have more area. So I'll show you why we do that, but let me write the formula and draw a picture. So it's the average chord based on area. So here we're integrating over all the chords and then we're going to divide by the area. Again, we're doing two because we did the integral from zero to B over two and DS is C DY. So what we do is we multiply the chord times the area of that strip. And that's because we want the chord to be based on the area because the area gives us the lift. If there's a part of the wing that has more area, then we get more lift from that. And so we get an average. We're adding up all of the C's times the S's and then we divide by S. So it's just like taking the average of a bunch of numbers and then dividing by the number of numbers that you have, right? The reason we want to area weight it is, let's say we had a really weird wing that looked like this. where this was um, eight and this was two feet. If we just looked at that and said, oh, well, the chord of all that's eight and the chord of that's two, 
if we did an average like this, got two different numbers, one's eight, one's two, we'd find out the average chord was five. That's not right, is it? I mean, it's right, it's the average of those two numbers, but it's not correct because so much of the wing has an eight foot chord, whereas just a little part has a two foot chord, then we have to weight it on the area. And so that's why that's done. So this is not right, obviously, unless we just want to average the number eight and two, and then the eight and the two don't have anything in relation to the wing, really. And then do I have time to write these formulas up here? No, we're done. So we'll start there next time. So look up the homework that's posted online. Um, start working on that. Friday, look on Blackboard and find your assignment for the quiz. You'll either be in here or Alberg Hall. Do you guys all know where that is? It's the health building over there. It's two, room 200, so you walk in the ground floor, go kind of halfway back in the building, and it's off on the right. It's a big lecture hall. So that's an in-person quiz over the review that I asked you to look at from 324. All right. And I'm going to work on figuring out the resolution here. I'm going to pull up my laptop and look at what the Zoom looks like on my laptop and see if I can debug the issues there. Somebody says the reason the stream is low def is because of data compression, but it shouldn't be doing that. Why is Zoom compressing it? Let me see if I can figure that out. Thanks for your patience in trying to get this going. Yeah.
Hello. Hello. Hello.